as usual, and we have the 10 minutes quiz at the end of class. So uh, first of all, um, let's review uh, the time dependent circuit uh, from last several weeks. So if we have a battery and we connect with a capacitor and a resistor and there's a switch. So at the time when we just close the switch, we can measure the current uh, in the circuit and the voltage on the capacitor. And we will find that um, the current is a function of time. At the beginning, um, the battery will charge the capacitor. So there's a current in the circuit. But at the steady state, the connection break because the capacitor uh, doesn't have connection. So there's no current at the steady state. Then current goes like uh, exponential decay. So this is the current. And if we measure the voltage, at the beginning, there's current in the loop, in the circuit. So um, we can treat the capacitor as a wire and there's no voltage on the capacitor. But at the steady state, there's no current. Um, so the voltage of the capacitor is equivalent to the voltage of the battery. So it increases gradually and then saturate go to the maximum. So this is a time dependent um, current and voltage. And I want to show you the simulation from the MATLAB and you can see how does the curve change. So I have some coding here and you can also learn to how to use the MATLAB to draw this circuit. So here I show you the uh, circuit. I have a capacitor and if you double click the capacitor, you can find the capacitance is 0.05. Okay. So this is 0.05, 0.05. And I connect with a resistor and the resistance is five. So the resistor is five. Then at the beginning, I just set an initial voltage on the capacitor is one volt. So that means if the capacitor is 0 0.05, then I times the one, then the initial charge on the capacitor is 0 0.05 coulomb. Right? So if there are four, um, 0 0.5 coulomb at the initial state, after I connect with the resistor, there will be a current. And the current through the capacitor, but at the steady state, the positive charge on one plate will going to neutralize the negative charge on the other plate. So at the steady state, there's no current in this, in this circuit. And I have a current meter to measure the current into the circuit. And I have two volt meter to measure the voltage of the capacitor and the resistor. So this measures the resistor's voltage this measures the uh, capacitor's voltage. And this current meter and the voltmeter connect with an oscilloscope. This oscilloscope, so I can watch the oscilloscope. So then let me run uh, the oscilloscope, see how does the curve look like. Okay, so we can check the current first. The current in the, in the circuit is exponential decay. And it reach the maximum at the zero time, then it drop down and go to the zero. And if we check the voltage on the capacitor, the yellow curve, you'll we'll find that the initial voltage is one. This is what I set. Then this drop down. This is initial. This is initial. Then it exponential decay to the to zero. And if we check the voltage on the resistor, then you will find that these two curves overlap. So that means they have the same voltage. Right? So this is uh, a time dependent current and voltage. Okay, then let me change one of the elements. 
I change the resistor to a uh, inductor, and I set the inductance is point zero is point two. So this L is point two. Okay. Then what will happen? So at the beginning, there are some charges on the capacitor. So when we connect this capacitor with the inductor, the capacitor is going to charge the inductor. So the charge flows through the inductor then neutralizes the, uh, the other plate. But the inductor, if C, the current change in the circuit, the inductor will induce an opposite voltage. So when this guy induces an opposite voltage, we can treat this as a battery. So the inductor is going to recharge the capacitor. So generally, um, if they are charged, then the capacitor is going to charge the inductor. But if the current change in the circuit, the inductor is going to charge the capacitor. So one is going to charge the other, and the other is going to recharge the capacitor. So the current in the circuit will like an oscillation. So let me play this, uh, run this code, and see what will happen. So you can find that if we check the current, you'll find that the current starts from zero, then increase, then drop down, then return, go to the other direction, then go back to zero, then increase, then go to zero, then, then go to the other direction, then go to zero. So this is an oscillation. And if we check the um, voltage of the capacitor, you will find that it starts from zero. Then after um, the capacitor fully charged, the capacitor could be treated as a battery. Then this battery will charge the inductor. So the voltage drop down, but the voltage on the uh, inductor also, you can see the current change because the current change, so the inductor can induce an opposite voltage. So this is going to recharge the capacitor. Then we have oscillation. Okay. Then the next question is that, can we determine the frequency of, the, uh, of this oscillation? We find that uh, the wavelength is around 0.7 or something. But can we change the frequency? So let's change the inductance and the capacitance uh, randomly and to see how does it change. So for example, I can change the inductance from 0.2 to 0.1. Okay. And let's see what will happen. Then we see the frequency increase and the wavelengths drop down. And if I increase the frequency to 5, uh, I increase inductance to 0.5, and what will happen? Now you see, um, I stretch the wavelengths and I decrease the frequency. So that means um, the frequency could be changed by adjusting the inductance. How about I adjust the capacitance? I can adjust the capacitance from 0.5, 0.5 to 0.1. Then I run the circuit, then I decrease the frequency. And the same thing if I uh, keep increasing 0.5, how does this happen? Okay, so you can find that this oscillation become very long and the wavelengths increase, but the frequency decrease. Okay, so we have uh, some hint that um, if we change the capacitance or we change the inductance, we will change the frequency. So can we get a formula of the frequency as a function of frequency, uh, as a function of uh, capacitance and inductance? So let me give you some derivation. Okay, so I have a circuit. Here is a capacitor and I have the inductor, 
they connect in this way. So can we determine are they connected in series or in parallel? Series or parallel? So uh, the answer is both, both. So we can think about they connect in series because the current flow in this way, right? But then we can also treat they connect in parallel because they share the same nodes. So there's nodes one, there's node two, and between two nodes, I can treat this as one branch, this is the other branch, right? So that means they share the same voltage and they share the same current. So because they connect in series, so the capacitor and the inductor have the same current. Because they connect in parallel, so the voltage on the capacitor is equivalent to the voltage on the uh, inductor. So they share the same voltage and current. Then let's check also uh, relationship between the voltage and the current. We know for the capacitor, if the voltage change, then the uh, capacitor will induce current. And the induced current in the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times time derivative of the voltage. For the inductor, if the current change, it will induce an opposite voltage. So the induced opposite voltage in the inductor is equivalent to minus inductance times time derivative of the current. I have a minus sign here because Lenz's law. Lenz's law says the induced voltage is going to oppose the change of the current. Okay, so let's put uh, this two equation together. So we have this guy equivalent to this guy. So the voltage on the capacitor is equivalent to the voltage on the inductor. And let's plug in this uh, expression into this derivative. So then we have the current in the capacitor is equivalent to the C derivative, time derivative of minus L, time derivative of the current. And we know C and L are constant. So I can take the constant out of the derivative. Then we, I will have minus L C second derivative of the current. And we know um, the current in the inductor is equivalent to the current in the capacitor. So I can change the subscript. Then I have the current in the capacitor equivalent to a constant times second derivative of the current. So think about the mass expression mathematic expression, what kind of function after we do second derivative, after we do the derivative twice, <coughs> excuse me, and after we do the derivative twice and multiply by a constant, we can get the same function. Can you imagine that solution? If we do the derivative a twice. Sine, a sine function. Say it again. A sine function? Yeah, we have two options. One is exponential. Right? After we do the exponential, then we just get the k square ekt. So after we time a constant, like a k square, one over k square is a time with times a constant, then we get itself. Right? The other choice is cosine function or sine function. And if we do second derivative, then we get a minus cosine omega t times omega squared. So if we times a constant like one over omega squared, then I get 
yourself. Then which one is correct, which one is not correct? We have a minus sign here. There's a minus sign. If we use exponential function, we won't get a minus sign after we do the derivative. But if we have a cosine function, we have a minus sign in front. So the solution for the current should be a cosine function. So we set IC equal to cosine omega t. But we don't know the frequency. This is the frequency, omega. But we can plot the expression into the derivative equation, then we can solve the omega. So we plug the IC into this equation, then on the left, I have cosine omega t, then I have minus LC, then I do the second derivative for the current, then I will have omega squared minus cosine omega t. So the cosine omega t cancel, and the minus sign, minus sign cancel. So I have LC omega squared equal to one. Okay. So we solve the frequency is equivalent to one over square root LC. So this is a very important conclusion. That means if we want to create an oscillation current in the circuit, then we need to connect an inductor and a capacitor to the circuit. And to control the frequency, we have to control the inductance and the capacitance. Okay, so this is a, um, a principle how we make a function generator. So to make a function generator, if we want to have a sine function, then we need to connect a capacitor and the inductor into the circuit and we adjust the inductance and capacitance, then we can output any frequency on the circuit. Okay, um, this is an oscillating circuit. Oscillating circuit. Also, we call the circuit as LC circuit. Then, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so for the configuration of the circuit, is that like the only way to configure it like with them being in series and parallel? Like, is there like any other way you could do it? Yeah, this is not the only way. This is the easiest way. So if you want to generate other oscillation, you can connect them with other um, elements like uh, resistor or you can connect um, two inductor or two um, capacitor with other elements. So you will have many choice, but I just show you the very easiest um, the circuit. Okay, thank you. Mm. And let me see. So in this case, we don't uh, consider the resistor in the circuit and uh, everything in the circuit is perfect and there's no energy loss. So you will see the function is, uh, is oscillation and without damping. If you check the current as a function of time, it looks like this. But now if I connect the resistor in the circuit, CLR, we call this RLC circuit. And let's see, how does the R do in this circuit? It, the R is going to consume energy, electric energy. Um, so think about an oscillation if I have a spring connected with a block, the block has a mass, and I release the block, then the spring is going to compress. But after the compression, the spring is going to stretch, so there will be an oscillation in the z direction. 
z direction, I will see an oscillation. This is an oscillation without friction. But in the reality, there should be some reaction, a uh, uh, friction. So that means if we check the oscillation in the z direction, the block has a very strong oscillation at the beginning, then it's then decrease the amplitude and go to zero. So eventually the oscillation will stop. So if I have a steady state, there will be an oscillation, but the oscillation and decrease, the amplitude of oscillation decrease. We call this as damping oscillation. The similar idea, if I have the resistor in the circuit, the resistor consumed energy. So the oscillation created by the inductor and the capacitor will decrease and eventually go to zero. So at the end, there's no current in the circuit. I show you the simulation. Mm -hmm. So I have RL here, the damping. You can see I have a capacitor, inductor, and the resistor. And I have a voltmeter measure the voltage of the inductor, voltmeter measure the voltage of the capacitor, and this is a current meter. Okay. Then I have the resistor and I have an oscilloscope. Okay, so let me run. Then let's check the current. You see the current becomes smaller, decrease. So this is uh, an oscillation, but the amplitude drop. Uh, so the question is, can I um, decrease the amplitude quickly, quicker than this way? Um, yes, and I can change the uh, resistance. The resistance, if I increase the resistance to 0.5, that means I have more damping. I input more friction and more resistance, and the damping will be very quick. Let's take a look. You see, it dropped to zero at the eight second. And also, um, can we change the frequency of the oscillation? And we can change the inductance and the capacitance. So for example, if I want to increase the frequency, I can decrease the inductance. One to one. Let's see what will happen. You see, um, the oscillation becomes um, very quick. And also, I could also um, change the capacitance. To increase the frequency, I can decrease this to 0.5. Take a look. How that looks look like. So you see, uh, there are more oscillation before the damp to zero. Um, so if I just use this oscillation to and to do the simulation, you will find that um, this is oscillation, but the amplitude decrease. And we can use the expression to express this way. So you can find that um, the damping oscillation could be use a exponential decay to draw an envelope. And between the envelope, you will find an oscillation. So that means we have an oscillation. This is omega t, this is a function. Then times a time derivative equation, or we can times uh, exponential decay. Then this is called an oscillation, damping oscillation. So if there's a current, then we times the uh, initial current, then the expression looks like this. So the 
the tau actually is a damping time. And the omega is the oscillating frequency. So one more thing, and in this circuit, I don't have power source, but if I connect a power source into the circuit, what do we have? And I connect with a power source, and the power source is, is an AC power source, alternating. Alternating circuit. Power source. So the battery is alternating circuit. And this is different from the direct circuit. If I connect with a direct battery, then the current is a constant or the voltage is a constant. Constant and the direction doesn't change. But if I connect with a alternating circuit power source, then the voltage provided by this power source is the oscillation. So there is a frequency. This frequency is provided by the power source. So that will be any frequency. Um, but we know this is a capacitor, this is an inductor. The capacitor and the inductor has intrinsic frequency. Intrinsic frequency. And we just derive the intrinsic frequency is one over square root of Lc. So if the frequency provided by the power source match the intrinsic frequency, that means omega from the power source is equivalent to the intrinsic frequency, then this circuit will resonate. Um, so if there is a resonation in the circuit, the current and the voltage will blow up. So the current and the voltage as a function of time. This is the oscillation, but the amplitude will blow up. Something like this. So we have to avoid this case because if the current and the voltage blow up, then it will damage the circuit. If the power source has a frequency doesn't match and the intrinsic frequency, there's no resonation. If there's no resonation, then the current and the voltage has the same amplitude. So the amplitude doesn't change. Okay, so let me show you the simulation. <clears throat> so the simulation here. Uh, oh, I'll see here. So I have a power source. This is a function generator, and the input is a sine function with the amplitude is one, frequency is two. And I have a capacitor, inductor, and a resistor. In the first of all, I have a capacitance equal to one, okay? and the inductance equal to one. Then if we calculate the frequency, the one over square root of one times one is one. So the intrinsic frequency is one. <clears throat> and the power source provides a frequency of two. So these two frequencies don't match. Okay, so I measure the voltage of the capacitor, measure the voltage of the resistor, measure the voltage of the inductor, and measure the voltage of the power source. And all this voltage meter connect with the oscilloscope. I open the oscilloscope, and I change the time. Hold up. I change the... Okay, sure. Like this. So let me run this circuit. Okay, 
you can find that and the v v none is the voltage from the power source so this is a sine function generator with a frequency of two okay then if you check the voltage on the capacitor <clears throat> okay the shape is not a sine function but um the amplitude remains a constant look on this one okay so the amplitude doesn't change and if you take the uh take a look of the voltage in the inductor then this is also a oscillation um although this is not a sine function or cosine function but the amplitude that you see this is a constant amplitude okay now let's change the frequency of the power source and i can change the frequency from two to one okay then let's take a look how does the frequency uh, how does the amplitude of uh, capacitor and inductor change okay and wrong Ooh. and let me change the skill in the y direction uh let's play i change from minus 50 to 50. okay now you will find that the amplitude of the oscillation for both um capacitor and inductor increase but if you check the voltage on the um on the battery the power source this is a constant. So we provide a constant power source, but if you check the voltage on the inductor and the voltage on the capacitor, the amplitude increase. So if these two frequencies match, you will find a very strong resonation. So we have to avoid this case. So any time when you connect the circuits, you cannot connect uh, inductor or a capacitor whose frequency match the frequency of the power source. Okay, this is very important. Okay, this is uh, the circuit I want to talk today. And I think we have seven more minutes. I want to talk about the impedance. Impedance. So when we have a power source provide the AC circuit, alternating circuit, I have AC power source connected with an inductor and a resistor. Let me remove the resistor first. I have an inductor. Um, resistor first. Okay. Resistor and the power source provides a constant current the current is oscillating function okay and the amplitude is a constant then if we measure the voltage on the resistor according to ohm's law we will have the voltage on the resistor equivalent to the r times the current that will be i non r cosine function So if we take the uh, the ratio of VR over I, we could get a constant ratio. This is R. Okay. But if I replace a resistor as an inductor, and the inductor that um, because for the inductor we have the voltage the inductor is equivalent to the minus l e i e t so we take the derivative of the current that will be i non omega cosine omega square uh, t do the derivative is minus sine omega t so we will have L omega I non 
sine of theta. So you will find that the voltage on the inductor and the current on the inductor is out of phase. Because this is a cosine function, this is a sine function. So if I draw the diagram, you will find that the current is a sine function. This is current. But the voltage is a cosine function. So that means the voltage leads the current by a phase of half pi, right? If we move the this the blue curve and in front of half pi, then we will overlap the red curve. Wait, so, don't you mean the opposite? Isn't voltage for this, the inductor is the opposite? Function? Is the opposite. So have two opposites as a positive. No, but isn't the voltage on the inductor a sine function? Ah, uh, hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Got it right. You are right. So um, let me see this again. So the voltage is a sine function. Voltage is sine function. And the current is a cosine function. Okay, so the current leads voltage by a phase of half pi. Okay, thank you. Um, so that means if we take a ratio of the voltage over current magnitude, magnitude. So the voltage has a magnitude of L here, omega I non, and the uh, magnitude of I is here, is the magnitude of I, I non. So I will have a ratio as a function of frequency. And we call this ratio as effective resistance. And also they have another name we call the reactance. They are the same thing or impedance. Impedance. Okay. So the impedance actually is uh, uh, effective resistance. I just use magnitude of the voltage over the magnitude of the current. Then I get a, a resistance dimension parameter. And uh, this show that if um, we have frequency, then the resistance of the inductor has a relationship with the frequency. And if the frequency turns to zero, that means the AC circuit turns a DC because there's no frequency. Then the effective resistance is zero then we can treat the inductor as a wire because there's no resistance, right? But if the frequency goes to infinity, then that means the resistance of the inductor goes to infinity. So in this case, if the frequency is very high, then the current is very low because this guy will induce a very strong uh, opposite voltage and make the current become very low. So uh, this is uh, impedance for the inductor and for the impedance for the capacitor, I think I will do this, do that topic for the next Wednesday. So next uh, topic of this class will be the quiz. Do we have 10 minutes to finish the quiz? And you can find the quiz on the course site. And uh, you have 10 minutes to finish. And after you're done, please upload the solution on the course site. Okay. So after you're done, you're good to go.